much GPU power do you need in a laptop? Well, if the answer is all of it, then let me introduce you to the Asus ProArt StudioBook 1. Now, this laptop may not look super impressive from the outside. We don't see any of the, you know, flashy gaming lights and accessories and styling we would see on a normal super high-powered PC laptop. But in this case, this computer is packing the NVIDIA RTX Quadro 6000 inside of it. Now, this is a pro-oriented graphics card, but one of the most powerful ones in the world. It has 24 gigabytes of graphics RAM and has the same specs in terms of CUDA cores and tensor cores and all that as the RTX Titan inside this tiny machine. In terms of other specs beyond that Quadro RTX 6000, this packs an Intel 9980HK 8-core processor along with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD standard. Asus has actually also done a few interesting things with the design of this laptop. They have moved most of the processing parts of the computer into the screen itself. Their logic with this actually kind of makes sense. It's still sturdy enough to stand up on its own, but the parts that are gonna generate the most heat, which may make your lap sweaty or a little uncomfortable, or even heat up the touch surface on top here, are moved to where you're not going to be touching them into the back of the display here. It's also got this rather clever vent that opens at the back of the screen when you pop up the display which frees up space for the fans to get full access to unimpeded airflow and vent out the significant amount of heat that I expect this machine will be producing. In addition to the processing components actually being moved into the back of the display, the USB ports have also been moved onto the side. It's slightly strange positioning from what you might be used to, but I don't really see it'll be causing any problems. We have three USB-C ports, two on one side, one on the other, and then what looks to be a USB-C port that is actually a sneaky power connector instead. Now here at Asus's booth at IFA, we did find this machine actually already had FutureMark with 3 d Mark 11 installed on it, and we couldn't help ourselves, we gave it a run. Now, we don't have a great basis for comparison, unfortunately, but the machine scored around 24,000 points, which 3 d Mark did report is faster than 98% of other machines out there. So, while 2% of computers are faster than this, I kind of expect they probably aren't laptops. It did also report that this comes in at about twice the speed of the minimum spec for an Oculus Rift gaming machine. We'll try to check out those numbers later and get you maybe some more comparison points, but still, seriously fast. Now, the drawbacks, of course, this is not exactly going to be light. It's not actually a 17-inch frame. It's only 15.6-inch screen, which is still plenty big for most people, running at 4K, but still, this machine, this significant chassis, is over six pounds of weight. So put this in a backpack, uh, you may get a little worn out walking around, say, a show floor like this for more than a couple hours. So who is a machine like this? Four, well, definitely creative professionals. We do not have pricing on this yet, but just know that the Quadro RTX 6000 by itself retails for $4,000. So we would not expect this to exactly be a cheap purchase. We don't know availability yet, but expect it sometime down the road, quarter four later this year. For everything else here at EFA 2019 from Engadget, hit subscribe and head on over to Engadget.com.